Would you all please, with your applause, welcome Prime Minister Joma. We're delighted to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Kind the uh, for this uh, for giving me the opportunity to meet you, and for this uh, kind invitation. Uh, I agreed with organizers that I will speak in English, so you will support uh, my English during 15 minutes. But I have I'm allowed to switch in French if needed. That's the rule. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I'm happy to be with you. I'm happy to get uh, this opportunity to share with you uh, about uh, uh, my opinions <coughs> and uh, about the situation in Tunisia. I know that a lot of you are eager to know more about what is happening uh, in Tunisia. Uh, you know that uh, uh, we, we succeeded uh, since uh, two months uh, a little bit more than two months uh, to, uh, to end the big uh, political uh, issues uh, which occurs after the revolution. Three years ago, uh, it starts with uh, some uh, young people, uh, leaderless, uh, political leaderless. It's uh, like a spontaneous uh, movement uh, by the people who were uh, these young people were educated uh, for a part of them, uh, unemployed, and uh, seeking, looking for uh, freedom, but looking for something simple in the life, like jobs, like uh, education for their sons, for their kids. Uh, and uh, th during three years after this uh, revolution, after this fact, uh, and the, the period was, uh, it became uh, political. You know, we did not have uh, oppos uh, um, many, many, many uh, opposition uh, parties, and now we should have more than 160. I think that we exceeded the United States and all the North America. So if you need, we can help you <laughs> developing that. <laughs> and uh, all of that creates uh, many tensions, uh, as well uh, since uh, the state was uh, shaken uh, since there was a big expectation and big frustration uh, from uh, many areas and uh, from uh, many people there was uh, it creates and generates uh, some uh, social tensions uh, and all of that you know uh, it was not sure that we could and that we would uh, succeed to find uh, the door to a peaceful uh, and, uh, and a, a peaceful uh, conclusion. But when we know the Tunisian history, uh, when we know uh, the, the Tunisian uh, uh, people, uh, we know that uh, always they avoided the extreme uh, solution, they avoided the violence, they, did, they refused it and they rejected. And that's what happened. Uh, we, uh, we found uh, the way uh, to conclude that by the di dialogue. Uh, so there was an initiative from uh, the civil society and particularly from what we call the quartet. The quartet uh, was uh, composed by the union, labor union, uh, associated with uh, the employers uh, or let's say the, the trade and industry chamber. Uh, with the lawyer order and the human rights uh, organization. Uh, these four organizations uh, made uh, the, the mediator and uh, with a hard but successful dialogue, we succeeded to vote and uh, to adopt uh, the constitution, which is a secular constitution, uh, which is a constitution uh, which guarantees the universal and fundamental rights, uh, freedom, like the freedom of conscience, uh, like uh, the freedom of worship, uh, so many, many secular and many 
we are really proud of this constitution, and I think uh, all of you, you know uh, a lot or a part uh, of that. So it was really uh, um, big successful. Uh, we spent three years to find that. Maybe it's so much, it's a lot, but uh, when we know how things are happening everywhere, uh, if we study the history or even if we examine the geography today, we know that that's the price to pay and uh, it's a limited price. Uh, with this dialogue, it was an agreement from all the parties as well to, uh, to, uh, to give uh, uh, and to, um, to compo uh, composer, alors en français, pour composer un nouveau gouvernement. To constitute, to, const to set up, to set up a new government, non-political government, and uh, I'm uh, since two, uh, two, two, two months now the head of this uh, new government who has uh, to be uh, neutral, non-political, non uh, with the equal distance from each and all the parties, and uh, with uh, the mission, the first mission is to organize uh, the election to turn uh, the, the page of the last step of this transitional uh, period. Uh, so, uh, to do that, it's, uh, it's not so easy, uh, but uh, I think that uh, we believe that we will succeed in that. Uh, and the first thing is to offer the right atmosphere, the right climate for uh, and the, the organization of this uh, election uh, that we, that they have to be uh, fair and transparent and that's the, uh, our first mission. For that we have to offer security. And you know that the security uh, was and is still a big issue in our region and uh, for our country, for Tunisia as well. Uh, so we think uh, today uh, that uh, uh, the, the scale is coming more from, uh, uh, from outside or imported uh, things than local because locally uh, there was really some, uh, some issues uh, that uh, with the help of the population uh, to, be, to be direct with you with the, with the, with the revolution and what, uh, with what uh, the revolution all around in Libya and uh, uh, Egypt and, uh, and Syria, uh, we got some trouble. Uh, we got some uh, terrorist uh, cells uh, introduced uh, in uh, weapons and uh, all the means uh, to, uh, to make some uh, attacks. Uh, terrorism was not, we are, we, were, we are not used with this phenomena in Tunisia. And that's why I think uh, we did not react in the best way by the beginning because we were not training to that. And as well because uh, the, the state with the revolution was shaken and a little bit uh, the, uh, disappointed. But since that time, we organized ourselves and uh, since one year now, we have uh, the right organization uh, to, uh, to withstand this phenomena and uh, to fight it. Uh, uh, we have a clear determination there is no place for terrorism or extremism in Tunisia uh, because we never, uh, we never know that uh, and uh, we never choose that and uh, we are organizing ourselves today uh, to improve our, uh, our, disp uh, our organization uh, to be uh, able to answer even to the random events. Uh, so that's the first step, and we get some progress this uh, last week by fighting uh, them and uh, beating the head, uh, the operational head of this organization. And we are looking to cooperate and to work with all our friendly countries, among them, as you can uh, imagine, United States, uh, because uh, this phenomena, uh, it's no more local, it's uh, regional and uh, more than that, sometimes it's uh, universal and to have the right answer, we have to, uh, 
to look for a good cooperation, uh, exchanging information, but as well uh, experience and working together. And uh, that's one of the aim of all my visits to all uh, the friendly country, uh, besides the economic and politics, is to work on security. It's important to uh, prepare the election in uh, the, the right way, but it's important for the future of uh, the country. It's important uh, to give uh, Tunisia the opportunity again to open all the doors for investors. So it's a crucial thing. We are uh, determined to fight each uh, phenomena like terrorism or each thing which is uh, not uh, qui sort de la, du cadre de la loi. Uh, tout ce qui hors la loi. Illegal. Illegal. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second, uh, to offer the right uh, uh, climate for uh, fair uh, and uh, good organization of the election is as well uh, to take care about the economy. Uh, you know, I, I told you that uh, the three last years were difficult. There was big disputes, uh, political disputes. Uh, you know, uh, our parties were, were learning as well how to make politics and uh, they made a good learning because uh, uh, they, everyone understood in Tunisia that the only way to manage this country is the consensus, is the agreement. And uh, it was uh, hard learning, good learning, but it has a price. And we discovered that the price today is economical. So uh, we have uh, some difficulties. We have the main difficulties we have in economy is the, the budget deficit. We have a big budget deficit. Uh, since uh, there was a big social pressure, and uh, so they tried at that moment, which, uh, which was a difficult moment, to manage that by increased salaries, by hiring in the administration. So we have a big uh, salary increase uh, for the state. As well, there we have a, a system of subsidies. It's OK? Subsidies, subsidies yeah. <laughs> a system of subsidies uh, to compensate uh, the, the energy price and uh, all the elementary food and so on. And uh, during these three years, uh, the, the cost was multiplied by three. So you can imagine the weight on the budget. There was a big pressure and no government could uh, move and uh, launch reforms on that uh, trouble time. Uh, today, we are facing that. So we know that uh, to ensure election today, but as well to ensure sustainability, durability, and uh, perennity for democracy, we have as well to offer uh, the, the right economic ground because we don't have to forget that the revolution was made to, to, for, for job, for better life, and today we cannot say that three years after that we offered that. So uh, we have to pay attention for that. The, we have the, uh, in my in the analysis of this government, the threat will not be security. The threat will, will not be uh, political. It could be economical and social. So, and we are working hard on that. We have uh, two kind of measures that we have to take. Uh, quick measures, uh, because uh, we, are, uh, we, are, uh, we are managing the country for uh, till the end of the years. And uh, so what we decided is really to push to quick wins, to show to the people that we can realize. And even though they were waiting with big promises during three years without having the dividend of the revolution, we can together uh, work and uh, have some dividends quickly. But uh, to solve the problem, we have to make reforms. And this <coughs> government is not expected to make reforms. It's not a long-term government. It's a short-term government. The main mission is to prepare the election. But even though we are not expected, we have to do that. And really, we are determined as well to start the reforms. And for that, we will use the same mean 
that uh, uh, the same way to, 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 to check issues uh, that with which we, we succeeded in the politics, I mean the compromise and the dialogue. And that's why for these big uh, reforms, uh, we are now involving all the parties, we are involving all the organizations like uh, labor union and the trade and the industry uh, community uh, to for a dialogue for the reforms. <coughs> so we have many things. So I uh, I, I told you about uh, this compensation system that we have to review and we have to review quickly. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, the reform of uh, the banking system because if we want to finance the economy, we have to, to improve that. And you know, the banking system in Tunisia during the last years of uh, the, uh, the previous regime uh, was, not, uh, was not working with, uh, with the rules that we are, we are used uh, and you are used uh, here. There was some corruption to say things that uh, so we are now making an audit and launching a reform and we have to accelerate uh, that. We have as well, and we decided uh, not to hire any more in the public, uh, public uh, administration. Uh, which was not the expectation of the people who were using these last three years uh, to wait for a chance to be hired in the administration because we don't believe that's, uh, that it's the, the best way. We, we know uh, that and we want to push their productive uh, jobs. Uh, and so that's why we will push as well and encourage all the private initiatives by make, putting in place some mechanisms uh, to help uh, uh, even for individual entrepreneurship. So that's the major uh, things that we have to do. It's, uh, I, th I think that uh, uh, we will not uh, get a lot of time to rest, but uh, be sure that we are determined to do that and uh, that uh, will be made mainly by, by the people, by the Tunisian people. Uh, there is two things which are important as well in this period and uh, personally, I am uh, really uh, convinced that we have to focus on that. Uh, the first is to restore the authority of the state because, you know, the revolution uh, made some decades, it's, uh, which is normal, but it's time if we want to build as something, uh, the, period, the durability, I mean, another durability, the sustainable, uh, we have uh, the, the, the chance of Tunisia <coughs> that it's a, a state which was built with institution, big institution, and that's why we resisted to the revolution uh, without uh, any collapse uh, because we built a state with institution, uh, and now we have to restore that with the cover of the new laws and the cover of uh, this uh, constitution, this new constitution. But we have to do that. That's a key uh, factor. Uh, and the second is really to motivate people to work harder because we know when we have a crisis uh, like we have, uh, we have to make some sacrifices and we have to work harder. It happens always like that. All the, all the lessons learned from the nice experience uh, all through the world, uh, Asia or any, uh, anywhere, uh, it's uh, necessary to, to do that. But it's not enough. We need as well uh, to cooperate and to, uh, uh, we need the support of all our partners. Uh, and mainly in this uh, difficult period, and uh, particularly from United States, you know, we have uh, uh, a deep and historical uh, relationship with the United States. Uh, I think that the first relations uh, uh, ship uh, was in the end of, uh, it's, it's around 1770, uh, 1780, 1795, yeah, so uh, more than two centuries uh, of uh, relationship. 
And uh, we were one of the first countries recognizing the United States, and the United States were one of the first countries recognizing the independence of Tunisia. So it's a long, 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 uh, uh, long time uh, relationship, and uh, we, uh, we look uh, today uh, forward to, uh, to strengthen uh, this relationship. Uh, we have uh, uh, an agreement, uh, we made an agreement in 2002 uh, uh, of uh, trade, uh, the TIFA, the TIFA. And uh, uh, I, I, I would like to say that we are really uh, working and pushing to, uh, to have a, a, a free uh, trade agreement. Uh, what, we, what we are looking uh, to do is uh, to push and to elevate our uh, relationship with the United States like the ones we have with Europe. You know that Europe today is uh, our first partnership. We are making 80% of our uh, trade with, uh, with Europe. So uh, we, are, we are well trained to work with uh, Western people. And uh, I think that uh, it's time now to push our relationship, uh, and that's anyhow our wish, and we will work hard to get that, to push our relationship to the best position with the United States on all the, the sectors, I mean, um, economy, but uh, I am here with the delegation um, to speak about new technology, to speak about uh, education, to speak about uh, security. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to get the support of all the people here in the United States. I, and uh, I know in this room that uh, we have uh, many ambassadors, so please uh, work hard as we have to do, the government, uh, to push all of this idea and to get step by step the relationship that we are uh, looking for with the uh, United States. So I will not uh, say more for the moment, and uh, even though I did not cover all, uh, all the things that you are expecting, uh, I prefer to, uh, to discuss with you in an open uh, way, so please, uh, I'm at your disposal for all your questions. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for that presentation. I'm John Alterman. I direct the Middle East program here. I'm also the Brzezinski Chair in Global Security and Geostrategy. We are delighted to have you here. We're delighted to have you here at this moment. Uh, we're going to open up the floor to questions. I would ask three rules. One, that you identify yourself. Um, second, that you only ask one question so that everybody has a chance. And third, that you ask your question in the form of a question, which is to have an actual question and not a statement and then saying, what do you think of my statement? To demonstrate, perhaps I'll ask a question. I'm John Alterman. I run the Middle I, I East will, program. I will try to make it work. Oh, no? How does Are we it good? Work? Are we good now? How does it work? One moment. It's We're experiencing operating difficulties. Please stand by. Is that better? It goes the other way. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, if you yes, turn it this yes. way. Okay. Perfect. Yes, it's okay. Um, you have been on an incredible journey in Tunisia over the last three years. You've seen tremendous change and, and unpredictable change in many ways. As you talk to people in Washington, what do you wish people in Washington knew about the changing politics in the Middle East that you know because you've lived through the last years in Tunisia, but Americans don't know? I think uh, that is, uh, I think what is important to know uh, is that area is moving. Uh, we are looking since a couple of years now to and uh, with the, the new generation which is connected and open to the world. They are looking for some changes and a progress and uh, trending to, to have more freedom and uh, uh, as well to have uh, a, better, a better life. And uh, what is happening today that we discover after this uh, romantic starting, you know, and we call that uh, the spring because uh, 
uh, it's more than a spring. It was seen and uh, labeled as uh, like a romantic uh, history. We discovered that it's not uh, so easy. And uh, there is, uh, in all uh, the region, uh, now uh, the situation is, uh, is hard. Uh, in Tunisia, I think this experience uh, is turning in the right way today after three years. And uh, what I want to say is uh, it is important for us to succeed. But I think it's important for the area. Uh, if the experience in Tunisia did not succeed, I don't know what we can offer as perspectives uh, to the people all around, to these young, uh, young people. Uh, we started the changes. Uh, we started the revolution. But we would like, as well now, to start the process to converge there to a democracy, uh, to more freedom, but as well uh, to more development for the people in the area, giving hope and restoring hope for the young people. So it's important as a Tunisian for me to succeed, but I know that for all of us, it's important if we want to secure this area, if we want to avoid the big troubles. And when we speak about troubles now, it's a serious problem uh, of security. And uh, you know, uh, we experimented that uh, in other areas. Uh, now, uh, the problem of terrorism and security is not local. It became immediately regional and universal. So it has a big meaning to succeed in Tunisia for the whole, re whole region. So, that's the first thing that I would, I would like to explain. The second is uh, the expectation of people is not ideology. And I'm speaking mainly about uh, the people. We tried. We tried many things, maybe the disputes. And the, it was normal. It's like a debate. But you see, when we voted the, 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 the Constitution, it was voted by 92 or 93%. It was not no religion no ideology inside. It was a secular constitution because that's the right aspiration of all the people. And we still believe maybe it's different in other countries, but the trend should be uh, that one. So it's important now to make this experience succeeding and to, to, to get it succeed. Uh, the key is economical. Thank you. I saw a question here. Yeah. Thank you very much. My name is Josh Rogan. I'm a reporter with the Daily Beast here in Washington. My question is, over the past three years, during your country's transition, has the US government and the Obama administration done enough to support your country's uh, transition? If so, what would you say are the three top examples of that? And if not, uh, what more can be done from Washington at this point? Thank you. Alors, vous uh, no, je vais répondre en anglais. In English, you know when you say that that I have to thank uh, the government of Obama for all the support they gave me because it's true. But as I have many problems and uh, to check in a quick uh, time, I will say it's not enough for me. It's a lot from the U.S. government, and really we have a good support and good uh, collaboration. But we are seeking and looking for more support, and that's why. I am here because we know that uh, uh, we can expect that from uh, the U.S. government, and uh, you are a part of of this uh, of this country, and I feel that you are ready to give this support. So, uh, which kind of support? I think we are. You know that we will start a strategic dialogue. That includes all the aspects of the collaboration. So we are speaking about uh, uh, more economical uh, collaboration. Uh, we are speaking about security, but we are speaking about uh, technology, employment, uh, uh, training. So uh, it's uh, it's a large co collaboration. Uh, but I should be honest. Uh, we have to thank the the, the the U.S. government for all the support, political support. Uh, and many kind of support, and uh, even in the security support, that, that was some uh, some hard time. Uh, this last three years, it was not always linear, uh, but uh, with regard to the deepness of uh, the depth of our relationship, uh, we can 
look forward, uh, uh, more support and more collaboration. And I think in the meantime uh, that Tunisia could be uh, an opportunity as well for the United States. When you see the location of the Tunisia, uh, we are in intersection of three big areas. We have Europe, we have the Arab or Middle East, uh, Middle East area and the Africa. And we know that uh, Africa and Middle East, uh, it's a potential economically, uh, economic uh, potential. Uh, Tunisia, it's one maybe, maybe of the best area with the resources we have, with the link and the bridges that we create with these three different area could be the right hub to develop uh, interest in, in this area. We have educated people. The level of the education, we are at the standard of the European standard. And uh, you have people speaking English, you have people speaking French, German, Italian, Arabic. And uh, we do believe in that. And uh, one of the big trends that we, we want to give to Tunisia is to, uh, to give uh, our country this position, a hub or platform to develop uh, to develop our relationship uh, with the United States. And it's not a speech, believe me. I, uh, I spend uh, a large part of my life uh, traveling uh, to US, uh, Europe, and, uh, and this area. If we organize ourselves, if we believe in that, uh, we have the mean, we have the right resources to do that. And I will uh, work as well with our uh, colleagues uh, and uh, our friends in US to develop the learning of English. I, I think it's important for us uh, because the economy in Tunisia, since we have high educated people, a lot of high educated people, uh, one of uh, the, the orientation that we could we have to, to, to give is uh, all the, the services, ITC, uh, tourism, but uh, some industries. And uh, for that, we have to export to larger and to import from larger market and larger area. Today, the English is mandatory to develop in, uh, in Tunisia. It does not mean that we will uh, leave the French or the Arabic. No, we have to enlarge to, 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 to make it richer. So there is a lot to, to do. Uh, we want to check the immediate problems, but we want through this dialogue really to make a projection for the future. And uh, we have all the fundamental key factors to succeed and to be a platform and an opportunity for US, but US is a big opportunity for us as well. Thank you. A question over here in the back, yeah. Uh, Bill Taylor with the United States Institute of Peace. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you mentioned uh, your success in, uh, Tunisia's success in this national dialogue uh, run by civil society. We all recognize that Tunisia is the leading candidate for success overall for the Arab Spring and for, for that region, democracy in, in, uh, in the Arab world. We would like to figure out if there is something about this national dialogue that, that Tunisians undertook, run by the civil society, the quartet that you mentioned, that is applicable to other countries. So my question would be, what was it about Tunisia that allowed that, that national dialogue to succeed? Thank you. So I will answer maybe the last two questions. Uh, uh, the specificity of uh, Tunisia, uh, that uh, why we, we succeeded to, uh, to find that. Because it was always through the history of Tunisia, uh, the way is, uh, uh, Tunisian is moderate. And even though when we had uh, uh, such uh, events in our history, uh, uh, you know, I, I will say it in uh, simple words. It's boring for Tunisian to make revolution for a long time. He needs, he needs when it's summer, he needs to go to the beach. Uh, he needs to, the, to go to a terrace of cafe. And believe me, it's like that. I, I, I am Tunisian and I know. So uh, 
to say that it's in the constitution of the Tunisian uh, to be moderate and to take uh, time to, to take advantage from the life. So with, uh, they spent three, three years doing that, so it was a lot. So that's uh, in the behavior of Tunisian. Uh, but I think uh, it was possible because we have this uh, civil society existing. We, ha we have this organization. The union, it's a historical, uh, historical organization and through uh, the history of Tunisia, each time we got a big travel, they play the role. Uh, we have as well this organization of um, of, uh, of trade and uh, industry organization, which, which is historical and which played as well a role through the history. We have this tradition of human rights organization. Even when there was the dictature, they were existing. They were suffering, but existing, and they were really in the resistance. So we have this institution, we have this organization, and we have a state. Really, what saves Tunisia from big troubles is the state. Uh, just after, uh, and we have a tradition, I will remind you something. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the first um, manifest, uh, manifest de, de constitution, chart. The first constitutional chart was made in 18, 40, 50, 56 or something like that. So we have a tradition, it's not new for us. We could forget it for a short time, but we have that in our history, in our tradition. And you know as well that uh, the, the slavery, uh, uh, the abolition of uh, abolition slavery, it was in 1846. So we have many, many things like that which help us and uh, we have roots and we know uh, that uh, uh, we have like a spring, uh, we cannot uh, go so far. We are appealed to go back to the right and to the middle uh, position. As well, just after uh, the, the independence, uh, many choose were, was, uh, were taken, uh, like the equality between women and men, uh, and uh, the, the big investment in uh, since the first year of the investment, the big investment in education and in the institution of the state. So, even during the revolution, our institutions still working. So, all of that helped really to find the way. Uh, is it uh, the same or I think that each country has its specificities. But I think that it should have an influence. And we know from our neighbors that they are really look looking with big interest to that. Uh, I'm not sure that they will do it in the same way, but it gave the example that the only way to solve such issue is the dialogue. And we know it's, you know, uh, in Lebanon, they spent 17 years. They tried everything, but the only thing that worked, it was the dialogue to solve the problem. So I think it will have an influence, and we would like to serve an example, but I remind that we, we, we are not looking to export anything. The only thing that we want to export is our products, our knowledge, and our service. That's a date and wine advertisement. So I have a question here, and then I have some over here. Um, Steve McInerney with the Project on Middle East Democracy. Uh, you mentioned that your government in Tunisia, your caretaker government uh, that you're now leading is not expected to undertake reforms, uh, but that despite that, uh, you will undertake reforms and that it's, it's very important. Uh, could you say a little bit more uh, about which priorities in terms of reform uh, your caretaker government will focus on. There are lots of reforms needed in Tunisia. You mentioned some economic reform. In addition, it's important to see uh, serious reform of the security sector, not only building its capacity, but also a serious re reform of, of that sector, also of the judiciary. 
you could say a little bit more uh, about what priorities your government will have during this period in terms of reform, and also which kinds of reform uh, do you see the international community, outside actors including the United States, being able to play a constructive role in supporting and enabling you to, to take these important steps? I think you asked a lot of questions. If you want me to answer all of that, I will switch in French. You have the choice. <laughs> we paid for the translator. Uh, okay. You paid, you paid him? Oh. You have to negotiate. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> negotiate the price. I will continue in English to allow you to negotiate a good price. <laughs> uh, Great business opportunities in Tunisia. <laughs> No, I think to explain more what I said. I said we were not expected to make reform, but we have to do. So I did not say we will not do. We have to do. Yeah, I was, I was not expected because it's a short time. So the reforms I told you to subsidize, uh, to stop hiring in the administration, uh, as well the banking system, we have to reform it, the fiscality. Uh, because one of the problems uh, that we get after the, after the, after the revolution uh, is the increase of trafficking. Okay? Uh, trafficking, so we have to reduce that. It's a non-formal sector which is creating. We have to, uh, to control our border for security, but as well for, uh, for economy. So that's four or five major things that we have to, to, to start today. And uh, as well, we have to simplify things for investors. Tunisia, it's uh, an open land for investments. Uh, and the European know that very, very well. And uh, even during these three travel, traveling years, they still and they continue to invest in Tunisia because we know that. We have really, uh, it's easier than anywhere. And I explained to you that the position of the Tunisia and the resources, the skilled resources and competitiveness resources allows and attracts a lot of investors. But now we want to diversify and to open Tunisia to more investors. That's one of the reasons. Uh, the reason of my uh, travel to the Gulf uh, area is to attract and to encourage and to market uh, the, the possibilities of, uh, of Tunisia as well one of the aim of, uh, of my travel here, we will meet um, my companion um, uh, uh, with, uh, with business uh, women and men, and I will have the opportunity and the pleasure to meet uh, investors. So for that, we have to adapt ourselves to the different mind and the different way to make uh, business. And uh, the main thing that we have to push in this frame time is to simplify again, again more and more the administration uh, approaches. Uh, for example, we are looking to set up uh, a one-stop shop. Uh, you know, uh, bigger, you have, bigger, bigger the administration is and stronger is, more laws they put because in their mind they want to control and make things clean. But for the business and for the investors, it's constraints. And uh, when, uh, when we if you can succeed to, to set up a company and to start working in one day, it's important for us. It's not the same approach for the administration. So we have to push uh, to, uh, uh, to through, uh, through that, that, uh, that direction. So that's the main future. Make uh, it easier for a new investor who does not know the country uh, to, uh, to, to get and to create and to invest and uh, uh, check these four big points, which are uh, belonging to the state. And all what we do, it will push to more uh, private initiative, to more private activities, and to restrict the role of uh, the state in these new uh, developments to the big uh, projects like infrastructure, uh, and even for infrastructure, we will push for uh, uh, a private, uh, public uh, partnership. Partnership, yeah, three uh, P. 
Mr. Prime Minister, we have two questions, two minutes. So where, can, I, can I encourage you to ask 30-second questions, and he gets a minute, yeah. and then... And then yeah, Mr. Prime problem. Minister Kapalintel, um, I set up shop two and a half years ago in Tunisia because I see Tunisia as the best growth market, probably the best growth market in the world. You have these small American investors like Honeywell, General Electric, FedEx possibly, and other people. You have Center of Renewables, you have Liberty in Algeria, you have Oil and Gas, Anadarko, and VNI. Um, on your trip, you're going to the uh, Chamber of Commerce later, you have the President. Do you expect to, will you be announcing deals at this point on your trip, and which deals do you expect to announce? I mean, Tunisia is doing very well. You have, you know, near Italy and all that on the private sector. That's one question. The second question right here, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the um, main... Sir, can you identify yourself? I'm sorry. I'm Dan O'Flaherty at the National Foreign Trade Council. One of the uh, key decisions the Constituent Assembly had to make was whether Tunisia would have a parliamentary system or a, pro or a presidential system. You seem to have come out with something resembling the Fifth Republic. Uh, is that, is that an, how, how would you describe the division of, of power in the new constitution between the president and the prime minister? Okay, I will start to answer your question. It's easier. <laughs> uh, first, I think you, you visited Tunisia since two years and a half. It's a lot. You have to come back. You are invited, I think. If you want, to, if you want me to make an announcement, you have, uh, we have to develop together. No, I will not make any announcement. Um, I have a business background, and uh, I, I have a rule. I did not announce something which is not already done. So we maybe, I know with the press who are with me, they will get some frustration, but it's a training. Uh, it's, long, uh, it's not a long period. It will change after, but you have to prepare yourself to that. Uh, I was in the Gulf uh, uh, countries, and everyone was expecting for a big announcement. I did not do. I'm sorry, but it's my way to do. Uh, so for the, for the kind of... Uh, the share of, uh, for the, the, the different, the the, 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 yeah, the, the kind of the regime that, uh, that we have, the organization that we have, uh, it, it was more a parliamentary, but with more balanced uh, share uh, with the presidents than what it's uh, done now in this transitional uh, period. Uh, so so there, there was a, lo a long debate uh, that's why they, they took uh, longer time than uh, expected. Uh, there is many arguments uh, for myself. Uh, I, I don't have to express any opinion because it's voted in, in the constitution, constitutions and I will just apply. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Please join me in uh, thanking Prima? Prime Minister Pardon, I forget something? Je pas compris. C'est raté. Okay. Uh, please join me in thanking Prime Minister Matthew Joma. No, I know, I, I know, I, I know, I know what he's meaning. I can guess. Just one minute, please. I, I can guess what he's meaning. No. Okay. No, I, I did not uh, know because uh, we discussed a lot, and uh, he knows that uh, I prefer. Uh, instead of speaking about uh, spring Arab uh, uh, time or countries, uh, when I speak about Tunisia, I prefer to express it differently. For me, uh, Tunisia is a democracy startup. Uh, and uh, like any startup, you have to believe in it, you have to risk, but you have to, to take the risk, but you have to invest. And I think it's the best moment to. Uh, invest in this democracy startup. So all of you are invited to invest in that to help this startup, and I'm sure that the growth of this startup will be quick and big, and all of us will take the dividend from this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Minister.